I'm Margaret Elizabeth Parks, and I was born in Nysner in 1925. And so I've seen lots of changes in the town. It was um, built in 1893, and this stonework was done by a company from Oatsorn, and the roofing was done by John, uh, um, a Nysner resident and the John Barrington of Portland donated some of the timber, like the stink wood for the doors and the white else for the uh, window frames. And then it was extended in 1936, and luckily they had kept some of the stone. So the, the, the building it was a continuation of the, the old building, and that was when my father was mayor of Nysna. And the, it was opened, as I say, by Charlie T, Charles C. W. Teeson, who was mayor of Nysna at the time. And the chairman of the library committee was a Dr. Clifton, who lived just down here on the corner in a double-story house. And he had a, a wonderful book collection, of which some of them he donated to the library. And if you go into the activities room, you'll see a large cupboard, which was donated by the Union Steamship Company. And some of Dr. Clifton's books are in that. And the tooling of some of those books is lovely. And of course, it's very valuable Africana. And we, as the members of the library committee, in, I think it was 2007, listed all the books there in the, this big cupboard and had it valued by a, a dealer in Cape Town. And in those days, it was just a few rand short of a quarter of a million. So it'd be much more than that now. And the, when, the opening of the... Um, library, his opposition, the Donald Curry Steamship Company, or the Castle Mail Packet Company, as it was known, donated three chairs, small chairs with leather seats, which used to be in the activities room and are now in a room in the jail. And um, Donald Curry, of course, came from Scotland, and he donated a wonderful steam, stained glass window to Dunkeld Cathedral. And um, Thiessen and Company d donated an ironwork hat stand to the library. And um, then, of course, I say the library was extended in 1936, and that the, the, the east, and then again just a few years ago to the north. And it's, it's wonderful to see the children here on a, in the afternoon after school. The, the St George's Church, which is in the main street, and sadly they've now had to put a, an ironwork fence up round the whole area because of vagrants. And um, it, there was no church here until the little church was built and that was when Robert Gray, the first bishop to Cape Town, came. And they then collected funds and they built the small church, that's a little stone church, which was opened in 1848. And then the Belvedere Church was two days later, it was 3rd of October, 1858. And then, of course, with the town growing, it became very small. And then they built the new church. And that was on land where, where Nisla's tennis court used to be. And the money again was collected. And the builder who, who was John Donald, a Scotsman, who had also just built the war memorial here. But sadly, he went insolvent before the church was f building was finished. So the uh, building committee was formed and they finished the church. And then it wasn't consecrated until 1937, when all the debt had been paid off. And it was consecrated by Bishop Herbert Guire of George. And Guire was a tall man, and his wife was rather a large lady. And they, unfortunately, had been on the Lusitania 
when it sank off of America. And his wife was sucked into the funnel and shot out. And they were such a nice couple. And that, I think, must have affected her. That's why she was rather large. But they were a charming couple. Anyway, that was a say it was consecrated in 1937. But what did it the beauty of the church is there is so much local handwork and when you come into the church they've now put a glass door on it and then you come in and you've got the, the Boer War plaque which used to hang in the small church and after that you get the font which was carved by uh, he was named a, a, a coloured mason, and that was gifted to the church by the school children. The pews are all of stinkwood, and theirs were, were made here locally. And the screen, which is across the church, that was made at the Crags, which is beyond Plettenberg Bay, by Billy Byrne, and it's all hand carved and it's a beautiful screen. I've got a picture in, in here that I can show you. And at the foot of the screen on each side on nine panels at the bottom which were carved by my husband's cousin Winifred Parks. Then you've got the lectern right next to it which was donated by my father-in-law Howard Parks and that was also carved by Win, and that was made in our furniture department, where Telcom is now. The uh, pulpit was made by the boys of the trade school, and that was a school that was established for t teaching the white men woodwork, and that is now where the provincial hospital is. The um, fittings were designed by uh, an architect um, in Port Elizabeth, all the designs of the furniture, and he was a friend of the rector Archdeacon Thorny Jones at the time. And the rear dos was also hand carved, and on it it's got a hand beaten cross, which was made by my husband's cousin, and she was paid twenty five pounds for it. And I've got the book in here, and I'll show you. And the, the uh, pulpit was. Um, Give, gifted by two, two people, but there is so much handwork there, and the, the windows on the east side, which were put up in memory of Bishop Gray, were made by a Hugh Easton, who was a well-known, I um, uh, can't think of the word now, uh, who made stained glass windows, and he also made the Battle of Britain window, which is now in, in London. And the windows on the south side, the two of them were both designed by Rosalind Thiessen, and they were made by Gordon Grateful. The, the one on the east was in memory of Chauncey Reed and his wife, Kate Thiessen, and the one nearest the door in memory of Professor John Day, who was a well-known marine biologist. And the one on the north side was in memory of Mrs. Fox, who had been organist to the church. And then there's a large stained glass. Um, it's not, we wanted to give a small window, but the rector wanted this big one, uh, which is in memory, of, gifted by the family to celebrate our 125th anniversary in Nasda. That was in 19, two, two years ago. Mm. Given in, in 1937 by the Thiessen family in memory of Mr. Charlie Thiessen's first wife, Bessie Harrison, who was a daughter of Captain Harrison, the first conservator of forest. And the teak gates that were under there were now being removed with the fence. Those were gifted by my father-in-law, Howard Parks, as was the red, the stone wall around the church. Mm. And they took everything to Port Elizabeth, you know, the, 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 including the pilot's logbook. And so when I did research for this book, 
I, I was a widow, so I could still had a son at boarding school, so I had time. And I could go down to Cape Town. And in those days, the library, the archives, and the hotel were all in the same street, Queen Victoria Street. So it was easy for me to go there. And I went through the arrivals and departures book of both Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. So at the back of the book, I've listed as far as I know, when I may have lost some of the, left some of the names out, of its, the first visits to, of some of the boats to Nyasna. It was originally three, two villages with a wedge, and we're sitting at the top of the wedge. You had New Haven on Nyasna on the east, and you had Melville on Nyasna on the west. Now, New Haven was part of Belkhout Kraal, and that was a farm as you go down to the heads on the left hand side and it stretched from the eastern heads up to Long Street which is just near this first street here with the railway and with George Ricks uh, it was owned first by Stephanus de Blanche he died he, he had it as a loan farm in 1770 and then Johann von Lindenboom married his widow, and then it was bought by Richard Holliday, who died in 1802, and it was bought by George Rex in 1804. And George Rex died on the farm in 1839. And then it was bought a few years later by Lieutenant Colonel John Sutherland, and he was visiting the Cape from India. And he left to go back to India and left his son, John, to develop the village of New Haven. And Colonel Sutherland died in India, but his parents came from near Elgin in Scotland. And if you're in that part of Scotland, the well-known school Gordonston is where Prince Charles had been, just opposite that is an old church ru ruin, and in the cemetery are uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sutherland's parents, and somebody added a name of, to this headstone, although he was not buried in that churchyard. Mm. And then, of course, I say that the Royal Navy had the land um, near the waterfront, and they wanted to build ships here. And they then swapped their, this land with the colonial government for the Simonstown dockyard. And then the New Haven, Melville, and the Wedge were amalgamated to form the village of Nysla, taking its name from the river. In 1858, he then suggested and they had this little wooden building built at the library before they built this one. And then um, just before you get to that, on the west side of Long Street, you've got Melville's, which was also, um, had been a McFarlane shop before that, and that was where the Standard Bank rented one ro small room in that, and then they, they um, went to another, and then they built the, the one that's across the road here in, in 1894, and of course now they're in the, the Nasna Moor. But the, the, this one across the road, see, was a double-story building with the manager's house above that. And um, Melville's, as you, you see it now, was built in 1920, 1912 by Teesons and it was designed by Simpson and Bridgman of Oatsorn and it's got lovely plaster work but unfortunately now I don't know what, what it is, whether it's a Chinese shop or what it is. But Belvers used to be a wonderful shop and they had the, the drapery and the groceries downstairs and you just, and you went upstairs to the men's department and uh, you, you got your account at the end of the month and everything was written there. You didn't have to pay cash for it as you do now. And then uh, um, 
Simpson and Bridgman, of course, also designed the new church and they designed Teeson House, which is another lovely building down, further down Long Street. And it's also got lovely plasterwork. That was built in 1916, I think I'm right in saying. And then there was a fire and the, the upper, re upper floors were built and they rebuilt it. And instead of having turrets it had before, it's now got gables, but it's got lovely plaster work on it.